Okay, it's uh, me, Loz Guest, here with uh, well, Mr. Anthony Kiedis from the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. How Howdy. are you? I'm good, thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you and your giant red friend there. It is quite large, isn't it? Yeah. Um, welcome to London. Thank you. Um, I was hoping you might bring a bit of California sunshine with you. I did. It's, it shows its face from time to time. Mm. It was sunny yesterday in the afternoon. Yes. My nanny who's a bit of a Mary Poppins, actually brought the sun. What little sun there is, she brought with her. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, have you flown in from, from Los Angeles, or are you sort of on the promo tour? Uh, is it? It's not a promo tour. We, we actually played shows mm. in Europe, and then it ended as a promo tour. Yeah. yeah, but we played all over Germany, Austria, Holland. Yeah. Fantastic. Those places. And, and how were those shows? Good? So fun. Yes. So fun. They were all fun. I think Pink Pop may have been the most mm. fun. How come? It was booming. The audience was just booming. It was all good, playing under the sky in the summer mm -hmm. in Europe. You know, people show up, they care, it's exciting. It's a win-win. But Pink Pop just elevated to the next level, which you would think it's an older festival. Mm -hmm. Maybe people would be a little bit been there, done that. They were having it that night. Uh, was, was the weather good as well, I've got to ask? Because over here it's been, it's been awful recently. Yeah, you know, it's been rainy over there, yeah. but people don't seem to care. Well, it's a bit like that, actually, on the weekend, because I was at Download Festival mm. in, in Donington, and it was just the worst rain I've ever seen in my life. We had, we had mud custard, right. I think people were calling it. There was yeah. rivers of mud. Yeah, that's a bit much, but I noticed people show up prepared. They with, do. With the boots and the gear and whatnot. Well, they embrace it. You know, we have that sort of British bulldog spirit over here. Uh, I think we go for it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Bulldogs in the mud. Yes, exactly. Cool. Exactly. Um, so you must be very happy, excited, you know, upon the release of, of the new record. Comes out tomorrow. Yes. I don't know when this comes out, but... It'll be out when this goes out, but, in, you know... Yeah, the 17th. It's, <laughs> it's a, out. It's, it's a date that we've been waiting for. Mm. So, yeah, the anticipation is, is coming to a, a full, frothy head. head. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Last night I was trying to fall asleep, and I was like, whoa, this moment is upon us. Mm. It's happening. Do you, do you still get the same sense of, of anticipation with the new album? You know, because it's sort of 30 years, 11 albums in now. Is it still the same? It is. It may, may be a little more than... Than, than ever in mm. some ways. We worked very hard. We spent a lot of days writing music and driving across town through thick traffic to get to studios. And you know, I woke up early and hacked out these lyrics and we care. And, and I gather you had quite the, the hard taskmaster actually in, in Danger Mouse. Yeah, on yeah, this, on I mean, he's, he's, he's no joke. Mm. He, you know, he's not afraid to go to work himself. I, you know, he would get there early, yeah, and he would leave late, and then he would go home and work some more, and then he'd call me the first thing the next day and say, I've got these three other songs I want you to work on before <laughs> you come into the studio today, and he was, he was driving the ship. It was really a, a, fort, a fortuitous move. And, and I, from what I gather as well, not scared to tell you if he didn't like something as from well. From the get-go. Yeah. Our, our initial meeting was to play him the 20-some-odd songs we had written, and he sat there and he listened to everything. And then afterwards, I'm like, did you take notes or anything? He's like, no, I, I heard everything. Well, did you hear the 18th song? He's like, yeah, yeah, I didn't like that one. But the one before it, I did like. I think we're going to have to write a new chorus. But I did like some things about that one. Well, what about the other ones? Like, he, he's not afraid to say what he loves and what he doesn't. Have you had that before? You know, working with producers, or was this was this was it was it more unusual? To it's have more unusual. Yeah. yeah, you know, Rick is. Um, also a musical genius yeah. and a brother, but he just wants to let you do your thing. You know, you wrote it, that's it, that's your song. Mm. Let's, let's record it and make it the best we can. Brian kind of, he wants to get rid of everything that he's not madly in love with and just work on that which he is totally in love with and then write some other stuff that he's in love with. He wants it all to be as blue chip as possible. So is there still a, sort of a bunch of stuff which you're in love with uh -huh. still, and he might not be? Is that sort of hidden away somewhere? You know, might that ever see the, the light of day? Doubtful. Yeah. But there are a few that we did record with him that didn't make it on the record, which will find the light of day yeah. somewhere. Soundtrack, something. Okay. Yeah. And, and how does it work? We, we, you know, was it your choice to go with Brian? Was there sort of a hit list of people you want? I mean, is it you that picks up the phone and calls him, or do you get someone else to do that? Um, it would be us who picks up the phone yeah. to call him. It was a, it's a, as a band, we're a true democracy. Mm -hmm. We share everything equally. The responsibility, the money, the tasks, the writing. Um, that's just how we roll forever. So when the notion came that we wanted somebody new just to force 
change. We need to change. Um, Josh knew Brian from having been in Gnarls Barkley with Brian. You're right. So he reached out first, but then, you know, Flea doesn't want to be out of the loop. So he also followed with the call and then I don't want to be out of the loop. So I was like, well, you know, send me his number. I want to talk to him. We all reached out and um, luckily he was available and continued to make himself available. Well, yeah, he's a busy man, isn't he? I would imagine. One of the most. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, you know, it's, it's turned out very well with him. I mean, the getaway itself, the, 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 the title of, of the record, is that something to do? Was it a Steve McQueen film? Is that where that's um, come from? You know, I, I have to say that Steve McQueen film sort of owns that title yeah. in perpetuity for all time. Mm. But I don't mind borrowing for the use of, of our <laughs> record because it's a different, you know, medium. Mm. Um, and same with the song. And, you know, it, it probably was a nice little phrase before Steve used it. Yes. He just was able to be a part of that great movie. And it makes sense for our record because there is a, it will transport you to a, a place which you could liken to be a getaway. Yes, but well, yeah. it's a funky little song as well. It's a lovely little jam. Really good. Yeah, uh, my favorite song on the record. Is it? Was, yeah. was that, you know, you know, being your favorite song on the record, was that one you maybe wanted to have as, as a single at I some chose point? it as our first single. I thought we should come out with something completely different than we've ever done before. Yeah. And to me, that song embodies that it doesn't sound like anything else we've done and it also sounds futuristic and has a, a mm. brian burton stamp of approval on it so initially he and i both thought that's our single um and then brian kind of flopped on me because he was deeply in love with dark necessities as a piece of music as am i by the way cool thank you mm. and the other powers that listen and direct singles and things like that which is really not even my forte <laughs> they all honed in and chose dark necessities. So sometimes they know what they're doing, don't they? Sometimes they <laughs> do, yeah. They, they chose Under the Bridge when we did not yeah. so many years ago. Um, Warner Brothers Records, mm. you know, they listened to it. And they're like, well, that's a single. We're like, eh, it's just a weird little ballad we did. It doesn't have to be a single. They're like, no, that's your single. Yeah. No, well, Dark Necessities, it, it's a great comeback single, um, I've got to say. I mean, it was, it was one which when I initially heard it, it took me to sort of two or three listens but it's it's a really addictive piece of music. I keep on listening to it repeat all the time. Yeah, it's nice when things take a minute yeah. to sink in. It's really good. And um, how are the rest of the bands? You know, all the Terrible. Other guys? Really? Not, not well. What, Very what, jaundiced. In, physically and, or? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, they're great because they got to go home early. They left, right. They left me behind to do the press. So they're all You've got the short straw. They're singing and dancing on the beach right now I in, in Malibu, California. Well, you're here in rainy London. Exactly. Exactly. 